What's up, party people? It's Chris with Profoto, and we are live in the studio here at Profoto HQ. This is Geared Up. This is our weekly live broadcast where we talk about gear, lighting techniques, photography, all types of fun stuff, and we have fun doing it. We take your questions, so if you have any, please drop them. Uh, Susan's over there rocking and rolling. She's got, she's got it on the Facebook. I'm probably going to uh, mess around and pull up the YouTube comments here in just a second on my phone. Uh, I forgot to do that ahead of time, which I'm good at. One thing you're going to notice, if you're watching this on Profoto.com, there's going to be some pictures that pop up either on the side or on the bottom, depending on if you're watching it from a phone or a computer. Those are just pictures to the products that we're talking about, so if you want some more information on those things, you can click it. We'll minimize the bottom. You won't lose me, even though you probably would like to, and you can go check out that stuff. If you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, you're not going to get that option unless you click the link in the description and then go watch it on Profoto.com. If you don't want it, you don't want it. You're here with me, so let's hang. Today, we're talking about how to do fitness photography. Most importantly, how do you create definition with light? So it's something that people try to do a lot of the times is they get into their lighting and they get big soft boxes and they point it right at the people. But whenever you're shooting somebody like the fabulous Luis right here, who is buff beyond compare, uh, they generally, when you flat light somebody, you lose a lot of that definition. When you're trying to you know, enhance the lines of a person, you want to try to start bringing the light more out to the edges. You want to create shadows because shadows are going to be the thing that create the depth in the image, right? So that's what we're going to be doing with today. So gear-wise setup, we have uh, four lights. Pretty simple stuff. We have a main light, which is a B10 with a three-foot RFI octa and a grid. So we have it gridded just because, and we've talked about this in the past, we want uh, the grid to take the light and, and focus it, pull it down, and it's directionality of it. Still stays relatively soft, but a lot more directionality. We're good right there? Cool. Then we have this bad boy right here. This is our Pro Pack. We're running a Pro 10 today. We have a Pro Head Plus on this, and this is going to be our room light. So what we're essentially using this for is we're gonna take this light, we're gonna blast it everywhere. The walls in here for the most part are white, so it's gonna give a really nice room fill without any directionality, which is kind of a, a pretty sweet setup for uh, Phil. This is something I actually learned from Anders. So it's a, it's a really sweet setup. Uh, we have it flagged off right here so you're not getting any of this hard light hitting Luis. And that way we can keep you know the integrity of the light that we're trying to accomplish. So in the back, we have two one by six strip boxes. These are the things that are gonna help us take some of that edge light and try to wrap that around Luis a little bit more. And again, start to show the definition of her body, which is really, really dope. So one by six is really nice because they're gonna give a nice coverage top to bottom. Uh, and then these both have D2s ripping through them. So really, really cool stuff. And we have them kind of pushed off back to the side. That way you have, um, you have the light hitting her on the sides and kind of reflecting off. So I think I probably talked enough. We could probably actually take some photos. Maybe, did I miss anything Anders? Oh, so something I learned about reflections earlier. Let's, let's just talk about this. Something I learned about reflections earlier from Anders. I did not know this, but um, when you have uh, something to think about when you're doing your lighting stuff, if you have your light raked off a little bit harder to the side like this, and it hits your subject and it bounces towards the camera, you're gonna get more of a highlight, more of a white highlight. Whereas if I were to take these same strip boxes and pull them over to the side, right, like this, and, and edge light her from the side, you're not gonna get so much white highlight, you're gonna get more of a brighter color. So it's, a, it's kind of a neat little setup if you're trying to avoid some of the hot lights, then having, if, if you're trying to bring some more of the color back in there, that's kind of cool. So all it's gonna do is gonna bring the, the brightness of the color up, which is kind of neat. So angle of incidence. Cool tip from Anders. So now you've got an awesome room light tip from Anders, and you've got an awesome angle of incidence tip from Anders. So why? So we're we're learning together. It's fun. Sharing is caring. So let's do this. Camera settings wise, f8, one two hundred fifty of a second, ISO one sixty. I just want to try to bring the room light down as much as I can, uh, and then the lights will take it over with. We're gonna have Luis rip a kettlebell. We're gonna do, uh, and it should turn out pretty cool. I'm sure you probably already have seen my computer screen at some point, but we're gonna do that. So I'm not gonna be, I'm gonna uh, catch the shot at the pinnacle of the move. So I'm not really, uh, cause I know that some of my lights are higher powered. So I'm not gonna have the opportunity to um, pulse at high speeds. So I, I'm just, I know kind of, I know the pinnacle of the move. 
So we're gonna just take the shot at the pinnacle of the move. So, ready to rock and roll? What camera are you shooting? Oh, camera I'm shooting. Yeah, people always ask about that. Fuji X-T3, uh, my lens I'm using today is a 16 to 55, and again, I'm ro rocking it at F8. So, so you ready to rock and roll? Sure. Let's do this. So, boom. So, let's, let's get one more. Lovely. So, if you go and you check out the shot, which we have pulled up right here, the edge light, and maybe I'll take another shot too here in just a second where I flat lighter, so you can see the difference of having uh, no edge light versus edge light, but because we're creating shadows by taking this light and wrapping it around the edges right here, you start to get the, that muscle definition that you wouldn't get by flat lighting somebody. So now if you're trying to minimize wrinkles or something like that on somebody, this is probably not the best lighting setup for that type of scenario, but for Luis, she's jacked, and we're trying to accentuate, you know, what she's already worked so hard to achieve already. So by taking the light and moving it off to the edge and creating some more of those shadows, we're getting the dynamics of the contrast of the, the darks and the lights, and it really starts to show off, again, all of her hard work. So again, the edge light, just doing a really, really good job of highlighting and then helping create some of those shadows, and then the room light itself is starting to bring up some of that contrast so we're not losing any detail in those shadows. So we have the variation between the highlights and the shadows, but we're not losing that information. So you can you could boost the contrast more if you wanted to later in post. You could leave it the way that you have it right here. It gives you more flexibility in your post processing. And then we have our main light just adding some some beautiful light right to Elise's face and it's really, really awesome stuff. Did anybody have any questions? Yeah. So you could grid, grid the strip boxes. Um, for this shot, I just didn't. Um, I don't. I didn't need the light to be so pointed. Uh, but if you need to control that spill, um, you could do that. Uh, I, for me, I kind of like the little flare that it was kicking out. So if you're in a smaller room, it would make sense. But in gotcha. Room, it's so other little thing from Anders that I wasn't th even thinking about. Uh, we're all we're in a really large space, so we don't have to worry so much about the light bouncing around the places, uh, and we have more room to move. So we don't necessarily need the grids. If you're shooting in a smaller space, grid it up. It's, it's a good move, so. Do we want to show this one at different levels? We could, and let's do that. We're, we'll take a couple of shots, and uh, I'll power the, the Pro Pack uh, down a little bit more so you can start to see the contrast increase, uh, and you can see how the room light affects that. And also, once again, as we start to introduce more shadows, you're gonna start seeing a, little, a touch more definition. So uh, do we have any other questions before we do that? Sweet. Let's do it. I need to pull up my YouTube here in just a second to make sure. So we took that last shot. I think we we're at power level of nine on the pack. We were. So I'm gonna bring it down to a power level of eight. So let's go down one. You ready, Luis? Yeah. Let's do it. Oh, I missed the pinnacle. One more time, I'm so sorry. Thank you. So we went down, I think, three stops there. Yeah. So. Let's pull this up. So let's go here. So cool. So here's the, the difference in the shots with the room light being lowered, the overall fill light being lowered. So you can see, again, we still have good muscle definition there, but we're not losing any information in those shadows. And as we start to drop, the definition is gonna increase because we're, we're bringing the blacks down in the shot. So you're gonna to start to see that pop up more, but then as it starts to get darker, you know, some of this stuff's gonna to start to fall off towards the edge. If you want that, that's fine. If you would like to maintain that without having to worry about, you know, uh, without having to worry about losing it, if you're trying to boost it in post, then bring that room light up a little bit more. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a big no-no. I'm gonna see if I can pull up uh, the YouTubes real fast because I know that we usually have questions there as well. Let's see. I apologize. This is super professional. I know you guys love it. Here we go. Let's see. Oh, just someone from Johannesburg saying hello. What's up, Johannesburg? In the house. So this is really, really fun. Again, when you're trying to create definition in your photography, you want to try to keep the light from being so flat, right? You want to move it off to the edge a little more, a little more side light, a little more edge lighting is going to do the trick when you're trying to create more highlights with the human form. Do we have anything else? Sorry, Susan. I kind of saw, saw a little movement like I was getting halted. Um, so again, it's just going to help 
create some more of that definition. And then again, your contrast is going to, the, the shadows is going to be the thing that, that are really going to help to kind of carve that out, that contrast between the highlights and the darks. And then again, if you want to use something to bring some of those uh, room, that, that room tone up a little bit so you can maintain the integrity of the shadows. Oh, we talked about this earlier too. So say you're, uh, so if you look at how we have this setup right here with the, the Pro 10, we're actually shooting the Pro head straight up into the air. Uh, so granted the ceiling here doesn't really matter all that much because it's black, but it's taking this light and it's throwing it everywhere around to hit, you know, the room, the, the gray floor and stuff like that. So it does a really good job of filling that in. What if you're shooting with a B10, a D2 or something like that? You can still take your flash and you could shoot it at a large white surface, a, a wall or a background, like you could do it with, you, do you want to show it to them? Yeah, let's just show it. So the one thing where it's going to differ in using the, uh, the flat front over something like the uh, pro head shooting kind of all over the place is the flat front's going to start to introduce a little bit of directionality to the, to the room tone, but I still think it's kind of cool. Let's get, let's get one more shot now let me just get this uh power set right okay i'm ready when you are yeah. three two one so cool just yeah just one's fine so let's do let's pull the shots up side by side cool so for the most part the fill's going to look the same but when you start bringing in uh when you start shooting the light towards something very specific and that light's coming back in a direction, there is going to start to be some directionality in that, the shadows and the way the light forms. The nice thing is for here, for the most part, it's pretty even, um, but it is something that you need to pay attention to whenever you're shooting. So. You can see a little bit darker part on, the, on her left side. Yes. So on the left side, it's a little bit darker. I mean her left side. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, right here. Oh, I'm drawing. That's not good. That's not what I want to do. So. It's live, baby. <laughs> Anything else or are we good to go? Yeah, someone wants to know if it will work with continuous lighting too. So, do the ideas behind creating uh, uh, shadow and, and highlight work with continuous light? 100%. It's, it's, it, it, yeah, yeah, the light, it's just creating shadows and edge lighting things as opposed to flat lighting. So 1000% light can do this. It just depends. The cost that you're going to get with the continuous light is you generally have to shoot a little bit slower or you have to shoot a little more wide open, which may be harder to nail focus uh, with this because we have the ability to shoot with flash and, and stop things instantaneously. I can shoot at F8. So if maybe I was off a little bit while she was in her movement, I still have a really good chance of having her in focus. Whereas if you're going to have to shoot like 1.4 for a lot of the continuous lights or 2.8, or you're going to have to start shooting like ISOs like 16, 3200, uh, you just have to give up something for that. And I think in the world of photography, a lot of times you have to give up something to get something else. In the constant light world, those are the things you have to give up. So uh, I don't think I see anything on YouTube. So I think we're good to go. Anything else? There's one in the bamboozer chat. Oh, we have a bamboozer. Hey everybody. We're just checking questions. I want to make sure that we answer everything before we sign off with this bad boy. Boop, 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 boop. So. We good? Uh, yes. Can you do the same using the, B, the B10X plus? Yes. I'm sorry? Oh, so someone was wanting to know if you can achieve the same. Are they, do they want to know if you can achieve the entire look using the B10X Plus? 100%. Yeah, this isn't, it's not necessarily um, something that is light specific. The only reason that we brought up the way that we were shooting the, uh, the room light is because that omnidirectional, something like the Pro Head, is going to lend itself to not having so much directionality. The B10 might have a little more directionality, but I mean, if you look at these two shots side by side on the screen, one was shot with a, you know, a flat light. We put the, the zoom reflector onto the, um, the end of the pro head and we made it flat, flush with it, and it's shooting the light in one direction. So 
100% you can achieve this with B10X. You could achieve this with A10s if you wanted to. Uh, it's the, the light doesn't necessarily matter that much. So. And one more. Yep. What are the levels of the different lights? Oh, light power levels. I do believe that I have the these uh, backlights set at a power level of um, nine, eight. So and so that's a D2 1000. So that's 250 watts. So uh, uh, then here I think we're at like a power level of. A seven and a half, I think. Um, that's a B to be 125 watts ish. And then with the room light, because we're blasting it pretty hard to fill this gigantic room, we're at a power level of nine, so that's 1200 watts. So again, we're in a really large space. You don't have to shoot it that that way with the 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 room light. It's just what we have going for us today. So. And if you don't have a, a Pro 10, what can you do? Can you rent? Oh yeah, yeah. And if 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 you're I see what you did there. Um, so find yourself, if you really like the look and you maybe you're wanting to use a look like this for something more commercial, then you could always rent a pro pack and get the same, like that omnidirectional look of the room light that you're not gonna necessarily get with something with a flat front. But at the same time, if you don't necessarily care that much about the omnidirectionality, a D2, a B10, all that stuff would work fine. So also, but if you, if you wanna rent it, rent it, because we have an awesome rental infrastructure. So in the meantime, Oh, oh, we have questions coming in. Let's do this. Um, so are the backlight boxes set up at 45 degrees, similar to three-point light? Someone's asking, are the backlight boxes set at 45 degrees? Not, yeah, it's a little bit less than that. It's, um, we kind of just did it by feel. So we, it, we just feathered it the way. We want to. Yeah, exactly. We 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 kind of took the shots and we just kind of feathered it as as, as we liked the way it was either flaring or not flaring. Uh, so no, it's it's not a specific three three point lighting setup. And then uh, can I use a one by three? Hundred percent. All right. So when they use a one, you can use a one or what are the spoke? Absolutely. And on a grid soft feathered off, can, you can, like I said, try to not skip subject because then you're going to start filling in all those shadows, which you need to create that definition. And depending on the soft box that you're using, yep, depending on the soft box you're using, we make strip masks. So you can, you could always do something like that. One, one last fun one. Last one. Can you guys do a burpee challenge? A burpee challenge? Oh, like I have to do a burpee? You too. Burpees? Okay, let's, get, let's do it. Or, uh, What's the challenge? Oh, she's gonna smoke me. Let's go. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna crush me. I'm gonna. Did my wife? Is this my wife? No, it's Nico. Oh man. All right, ready. I've got a microphone on. I guess whoever's the Awesome. This has been really, really fun. So, uh, oh, sick. Good job. I'm going to go die now. If you want to get into one of our one-on-one -on -one breakout sessions, go click the link. Have an awesome rest of your week. Peace out from Stockholm. I'm dead.